Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Liberate Lunations. My name is Eleonora and today we're going to be talking about the Virgo new moon that happens on September 6th with a speak time of 5.52 p.m. and that's for Pacific Standard Time. Virgo is a Mercury ruled sign which means Mercury is the planet that's going to be ruling this lunation. So this uh, new moon will be focused more on the intellectual aspect of our lives. Mercury right now is in the diplomatic air sign of Libra, which will bring a light heartedness to the energy and when it comes to connecting and communicating to the people around you. Okay, so for this new moon, I have a few aspects I want to talk to you about, so let's get right into it. All right, so for our first aspect, we have both the sun and moon in Virgo that are going to be trine Uranus, who is retrograde in Taurus. So this is a good aspect to get out of ruts, to get out of your comfort zone, to try new things. And it's an opportunity to take a different approach into your intention and goal setting this time around. The sun and moon in Virgo right now serves for meticulous execution of tasks with a lot of grounded and dedicated energy. Moving on to Mars in Virgo is going to be trying Pluto who is retrograde in Capricorn. This energy serves to be assertive and direct to get what you want. There's a possibility of feelings also being amplified, especially because we have Venus square Pluto today. So not only Mars, the planet of action and drive, is trining Pluto, but Venus, the planet of love and relationships and um, connections, is square it. So it, that creates a bit of a friction and kind of like an all or nothing energy, like go with me to the depths and to death, basically. Next up, we have Mars and Virgo again, who is going to be opposite Neptune, retrograde, and Pisces. So Mars trying Pluto, right? Amplifying feelings. Mars opposite Neptune, I think, is going to help take a little bit of the edge off the energy and kind of transform it into assertiveness without the aggressiveness. Um, so kind of dulling it down just a bit. The last aspect I want to touch on is going to be Venus and Libra trying Jupiter, who is retrograde in Aquarius. This is a harmonious aspect between two benefics, which are Jupiter and Venus. And even though Jupiter is still retrograde, this can bring a little bit of a lightheartedness to the energy that is going to be going on today. This aspect might also help you decipher which goals and intentions uh, would be the best and most worth focusing on this time around because there it's kind of an energy of being able to pinpoint what intentions and what goals are going to be the most fruitful for you at this time okay now i'm going to pull a card for you guys again as usual this is an energy that we can find support in some answers in during this new moon in virgo that's going to happen okay so we have <laughs> both uh, the first quarter moon and we have the lunar eclipse card. So um, lots of lunar energy, which I'm not surprised because it is a new moon. Um, so first quarter moon, I don't know if you guys know, but it's usually um, obviously the first quarter after the new moon. So it's when it's a good time to check in with your intentions, check in with your goals, see and see your things actually coming into fruition. You see those seeds starting to sprout a little um, and you kind of are getting messages of what to do to keep nurturing these ideas, these goals, these intentions. I think with this new moon, especially being a new moon in Virgo, a mercury sign which is very much about the mind so really think think in the future think how is it going to look during the first quarter how is it going to how envision your intentions your goals your ideas already growing already on that stage um i love it because every time i talk to one of my friends and if we're talking about any kind of issues especially money issues like when you're struggling, when you don't have money, it's already putting yourself in the mindset that like that money is already in your bank account, that money is already yours. It's already on its way to you. Um, I want you to do the same thing with these intentions. It's like these intentions that you're setting, they're already yours. These ideas, these goals that you're setting, it's already yours. You already have it. You already envisioned the idea of them growing and working um, for 
you to your advantage. And then moving on to the lunar eclipse, you guys know eclipses get crazy energy. They're like basically, especially a lunar eclipse, full moon on steroids, basically, right? Um, but eclipses are said to be very revealing, especially a full moon eclipse. Um, it's a lot of things coming to light, a lot of truths being revealed, a lot of things being exposed. So pay attention to those things around you. Pay attention to the signals that the universe might be sending you, the stars, the cosmos, the planets, whatever you want to call it, your angels, guides, spirits, ancestors. Pay attention because somebody might be trying to pull some, some tricks and let them know you're not the one, you know? Um, just focus on your path and... I guess really stay true to yourself, but also like be on the lookout, be on the lookout for anything that might reveal itself to you. It might not be bad. It might not be bad at all. It might be something really good that you just kind of not seen before. So yeah, pay attention to those things around you. And also whatever your, uh, whatever you're setting goals with today, it's already yours. It's already yours. All right, for crystal to recommend, I'm gonna recommend fluorite. Fluorite is one of my favorite crystals. I like to call it the tunnel vision crystal because it helps me focus, um, especially when I have goals in mind. I'm trying to channel my energy into this goal, into this intention. Fluorite can help me do that. It also helps with opening the heart chakra and the crown chakra, especially if you get a piece that has both green and purple in there, it can help you connect, it can help you open up, um, and it can help you be very in tune with those two chakras. It's also good, a good crystal to help lighten all this earth energy that we have right now, um, and almost like that perfectionist energy that Virgos can tend to have sometimes. So, um, it's a really good crystal, not only for grounded, but also for like kind of de-stressing a little bit. And needless to say, it is also a protective stone. So for me, it is a must. For events to recommend, we have a breath work and meditation for manifestation. That's with Raquel. And that's going to be on Tuesday, September 7th at 7 p.m. This happens every Tuesday. Um, it's both live stream and in person. If you want to come in person, it's at our Sherman Oaks location. If you want to do live stream, you can do it from anywhere at any time. You get a 48 hour replay after the class is done. All right, guys, that is it for this new moon in Virgo. Wow. I hope you have a great manifestation week. Uh, hope you're healthy. Hope you're happy. I'm sending you so, so much love, many, many blessings, and have a very, very happy Virgo new moon. A reading's a uh, shared time and space with someone who is spiritually connected. An opportunity to get clarity and reassurance, um, guidance on any area of your life that you may feel stuck or not in flow with. So readings are basically um, extremely helpful for you to make decisions that needed to be made. For having clarity on life's questions, healing, um, empowerment to move someone from fear to being empowered. When you're feeling stuck, when you can't answer the question yourself, when you find yourself in a little bit of a spin out. I don't think there's anything that a reading is not good for. You know, the perfect time for a reading can be any time. We are constantly changing, so we are constantly coming up against obstacles or reoccurring patterns that we need to check in with. When things just feel really heavy and dark and you might be a little confused about some of the things on your, on your path, maybe certain relationships or opportunities. So we all have blind spots. So when you find yourself in a blind spot, that's a really good time to get a reading. So readings are good to check in to find out where your progress is through the eyes of someone else who's holding you in the highest good for all concerned. Change is always good ultimately, and sometimes it's hard to see that, and readings bring you back to that center of what it's for for you.